Sorting algorithms are algorithms that give us the ability to sort data in a particular order. And we have many sorting algorithms, each one of them has its pros and cons. One of the most popular ones is quicksort, the one we will discuss today. The idea of quicksort is that it chooses a pivot from the array, then it partitions the array into two parts, a part where elements are smaller than the pivot, and a part where elements are greater than the pivot. Now that we did that, we recursively do the same thing to the part before the pivot, and the part after the pivot. At the end of the recursive process, the array becomes sorted. Before jumping to an example, I just wanted to let you know that the next Saturday inshallah, October 2nd, 2021, a new course will be released, the Dynamic Programming Course. We will talk more about it in the presentation video that will be released the same day, stay tuned. Let's go back to quicksort to see an example, let's solve this array by using quicksort. We have many ways of choosing a pivot, we'll talk about that later, but for now, let's just choose the first element. Now the idea is that we put two pointers left and right, then we switch for an element that is greater than or equal to the pivot from the left, an element that is smaller than or equal to the pivot from the right, and we swap. We keep doing that until left exceeds right. After the loop stops, we need to take pivot to its position, to have smaller elements from its left and greater elements from its right. Its corresponding position is now at the index right, this is why we swap R of start, which is the pivot because we decided to choose the first element, with R of right. We also return the position of the pivot, we need it in the quick sort function. In our example, the first element is 42, it will be our pivot. We put the two pointers left and right, and let's start by searching for an element that is greater than or equal to pivot from the left. 15 is smaller, 20 is smaller, 53 is greater, we found it. Now we find one that is smaller than or equal from the right, 36 is smaller, so we already found it. We swap, and we repeat the process. 36 is smaller, 54 is greater, we found it. From the right, 53 is greater, but 2 is smaller, we can swap. We repeat, 2 is smaller, 28 is smaller, 10 is smaller, 52 is greater. From the right, 54 is greater, 37 is smaller, we swap. We repeat, 37 is smaller than 42, 45 is greater. From the right, 52 is greater, 30 is smaller, we can swap. We continue, 30 is smaller, 55 is greater. From the right, 45 is greater, 17 is smaller, we swap. We continue, 17 is smaller, 12 is smaller, 11 is smaller, 55 is greater. From the right, 55 is greater, 11 is smaller. But you can see that left exceeded right, so we stop. We just swap the element at index right with the pivot, and we finish partitioning the array. The pivot was 42, you can see that all elements before it are smaller, and all elements after it are greater. But we didn't sort the array yet, now we need to recursively sort the part before the pivot and the one after the pivot. Let's start with the one before it, we choose the pivot, we choose the pivot, the first element in the array as said earlier, and we put left and right pointers. We can start, 15 is greater, so we already found what we're searching for. From the right, 12 is greater, 17 is greater, 30 is greater, 37 is greater, 10 is smaller, we swap. We continue, 10 is smaller, 20 is greater. From the right, 15 is greater, 28 is greater, 2 is smaller, we swap. We continue, 2 is smaller, 36 is greater. From the right, 20 is greater, 36 is greater, 2 is smaller. But left exceeded right, so we swap the element at right with the pivot and we stop. We finish partitioning, all elements before the pivot are smaller and all elements after it are greater. But we need to recursively sort both parts, we start with the one at the left. From the left, 10 is greater, from the right, 10 is greater, but 2 is smaller. But left exceeded right, we swap our right with pivot, and we finish partitioning. You have to know that the base case of our recursive function is when the part we're partitioning has less than two elements, which is the case for both left and right part here, they are already partitioned, this is why we backtrack to the previous recursive call, where 11 was the pivot, and we saw the right part now. The first element is the pivot, and we put left and right. We can start, 20 is smaller, 28 is smaller, 15 is smaller, 37 is greater. From the right, 12 is smaller, we can swap. We continue, 12 is smaller, 30 is smaller, 17 is smaller, 37 is greater. From the right, 37 is greater, 17 is smaller. But left exceeded right, the outer while loop stops, we swap our right with pivot, and we finish partitioning. 
Left part now, the first element is the pivot. 20 is greater, we already found what we're searching for, and from the right, 30 is greater, but 12 is smaller, we swap. Let's continue, 12 is smaller, but 28 is greater. From the right, 20 is greater, but 15 is smaller, we swap. Let's continue, 15 is smaller, but 28 is greater. From the right, 28 is greater, but 15 is smaller. But left exceeded right, we swap our right with pivot, and we finish partitioning. Left part, 15 is the pivot, 12 is smaller, we increment left, and it exceeded right. So we swap our right with pivot, and we finish partitioning. Now both parts have less than 2 elements, so they are already sorted, nothing changes. We backtrack to the previous call. Right part now, 20 is smaller, but 30 is greater. From the right, 30 is greater, but 20 is smaller. But left exceeded right, we swap our right with pivot, and we finished. Both parts have less than two elements, they are already sorted, we backtrack. We sorted both parts, we backtrack. Right part has only one element, so it's already sorted, so we sorted both parts, we backtrack. Here we sorted both parts, we backtrack. Now we sort the right part, 45 is smaller, 52 is smaller, 54 is smaller, 53 is smaller, we increment and left exceeds right. So we swap our right with pivot, and we finished. Left part, 45 is smaller, 52 is smaller, and here, it exceeded right, we swap our right with pivot, and we finished. Left part now, 45 is smaller, and here, it exceeded right, so we swap our right with pivot, and we finished. Both parts have less than 2 elements, we backtrack. We sorted left part, right part has no elements, so it's already sorted, we backtrack. We sorted left part, and right part has no elements, we backtrack. Same thing here, we backtrack. Now we sorted both parts and it's the initial function call so we finished sorting the array as you can see. We finished sorting it by using quicksort. Here is the recursion tree of the process. Note that here to choose the pivot, we took the first element, but we have other ways to do so. For example, taking the middle element, or choosing an element randomly, or choosing the median of the first, middle and last element. Choosing the median is a good choice. Complexity analysis now. The best case of quicksort is when the pivot is always the median of the array, the middle value, because after partitioning, our pivot will be in the middle. Which means that now we need to sort two arrays of n by two elements, same as in merge sort. In that case, t of n, the cost of sorting an array of n elements with quicksort, will be 2 times t of n by 2 plus n. 2 times t of n by 2 because we will recursively sort two arrays of n by two elements, and n is the cost of partitioning the array because we traverse the whole array when partitioning. By using the master theorem, we find out that it gives an O of n log n time complexity in the best case. But we can have the worst case, it's when we always choose the smallest or the greatest element as a pivot, because after partitioning the array, the pivot will be at one of the extremities of the array, which means that now we need to sort an array of zero elements, but we also need to sort an array of n minus one elements. Then same thing, the algorithm chooses the worst possible pivot, which will require us after partitioning to sort an array of n minus 2 elements, and so on, the total cost will be n plus n minus 1 plus n minus 2, and so on until 1, the Gauss sum, which gives an O of n squared time complexity. But this case rarely happens, especially if we optimize the way of choosing a pivot, the time complexity of quick sort is O of n log n in average. And for the space complexity, even if we don't use another array in quicksort, but it's a recursive function, so we need to take into consideration the cosec size. In the best case, when the pivot is always the median, the input size gets divided by 2 at each level, same as in merge sort. So the cosec size is log 2 of n, we get an, we get an O of log n space complexity. But in the worst case, when we choose the worst possible pivot, the array size decreases by 1 only at each level, so the cosec size will be n, which gives an O of n space complexity. But we have an optimization that involves tail recursion that limits the space usage to O of log n, even in the worst case, so we always get O of log n extra space, we can say that the space complexity of quicksort is O of log n. Properties now. Quicksort sorts elements by comparing them, it's comparison based. Quicksort is not stable because swapping non-adjacent elements can change the order of elements that have the same key. Quicksort is recursive, as you could see in the process. Even if the space complexity of quicksort is O of log n and not O of 1, but we consider it in place, O of log n is acceptable. Quicksort doesn't take advantage of pre-sortedness of elements, then it's not adaptive. 
It's also not online, we need to have all the elements available since the beginning. Recap on quick sort, it's a sorting algorithm that starts by choosing a pivot, puts elements smaller than the pivot in the left part and elements greater than the pivot in the right part, then recursively sorts them both. It has an off and log n time complexity in the best and average case and off n squared in the worst case. And for the space complexity, it's off log n because of the call stack. And by the way, even if quicksort has an off n squared time complexity in the worst case, but it's still considered as one of the fastest comparison based sorting algorithms. We reached the end of this video, I hope that now you know how quicksort algorithm works, share the video and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next one.